Legends of Location. It's Prof G, and it's about time we figure out where we are, Swift UI style. We're going to work with Location Manager to get the device's location, and this will provide the basis for place lookup and plotting locations on a map, which we'll cover in future lessons. Let's locate the big learning. Now, while this lesson is part of the Snacktacular app, it can also be watched independently because over the next two lessons, we're going to create a small demonstration app. First to get the device's location, then in the next lesson, we'll use this as part of getting the place lookup, where we return a name, address, latitude, and longitude of places that we search for in a search field. And once we get this built, you'll have a project that you can return to anytime you want to grab location or place lookup code, and we'll eventually raid this project for code and add it to our Snacktacular app. So let's create that new project with file, new project, and we'll call this place lookup demo. And the first thing I'd like to do is to create a location manager class to handle getting the device's location. Let's put this right underneath the project's app file. So right click on place lookup in the project navigator, select new file. This is going to be a Swift file, and we'll call this location manager, upper camel case. Now we're going to be working with the MapKit library. If you look at similar code, you might see folks import core location. MapKit actually has core location as a subset, but this will give us access to some additional data structures that we need that are associated with maps, so we'll import MapKit. And we'll start with at main actor so that we don't run into any of those purple errors if our app tries to run stuff related to the user interface on a thread that's not the super fast main thread. And as we work with location manager, we need to declare our class with a couple of protocols. So we'll say class location manager colon ns object comma observable object open and close curlies. Now this code that we're about to write is not especially user friendly and we're going to go through it fairly quickly. But what's nice is once we set this up, you'll have a fairly reusable location manager. So first we're going to create a couple of published variables. We'll say at published var location colon cl location. Cl stands for core location. That's the iOS library that works with locations. And a cl location value is going to give us access to latitude and longitude coordinates. And if we can't get the core location or we haven't gotten it yet, then this value will be nil. So we need to put a question mark after this. And below that, we'll add at published var region equals mk coordinate region. And this will be a rectangular region around the user's device location. And we'll set the width and height to meters below. And just pass in empty parentheses here. We're just initializing this to an empty value. Now we're also going to need to create a CL location manager object to get the location. And we don't need access to this outside of this class. So we can declare and create it with private let Location manager equals see a location manager, open and close parens. And then we're going to set up some properties of our location manager to dictate how our location will be determined. Unfortunately, these values aren't super user friendly, but I'll tell you what they're all about as we enter them. First of all, we're going to enter this as an initializer. Remember, an initializer is going to run whenever we create a new object using this class. Now, normally when we write an initializer, we just say init. But here we're working with an NS object protocol. And not to get too deeply into the weeds here, but we're going to override an existing initial that Apple has already created. And we do that just by saying override the keyword space init and then open and close parens open and close curlies. Now we want to call Apple's initializer first so we get all of the good Apple stuff to start. We do that with super dot init open and close parens. Then below this, we're going to add all of the properties that we want to customize in our own initializer. So we're going to say location manager lower camel case dot desired accuracy equals and these values have weird names. So this first one is KCL location accuracy best. Believe it or not, the K is supposed to represent a constant. I know, not a C. But this constant is going to say, hey, use the best accuracy when getting the location. Then below this, location manager dot distance filter equals KCL distance filter none, which means essentially report all movement on the device. Then we're going to call a method to request permission to get the device's location, which is required when we use location services. And we do that with location manager dot request always authorization, open and close parens. Then we need to tell our app to start getting the location. And we do that with location manager dot start updating location, open and close parens. And then finally, we set the delegate for the location manager with location manager dot delegate equals self. Now, what this does is it says when Apple needs to call functions associated with the location manager so it can get the location for us, then it will pass on some calls to specific functions to our app so our app can provide additional processing. 
The delegate essentially says, hey, iOS wants to be able to delegate certain tasks, and the self means this particular class, the file that we're in. So what we'll do below is we're going to write a special function that iOS will call whenever the location changes, and it's our job inside this class, the self, to write whatever code we should be executing whenever the device location changes. So the delegate just says, hey, when iOS needs to call specific functions that it expects us as the programmer to have included in our code, this is where it should look. And now let's write that function that we need to call. And I'm actually going to do this down below in an extension. I could do it above, but sometimes it's nice to group all of the functions that are associated with a particular protocol in an extension just for organizational purposes. So we'll do that. We'll say extension location manager, the name of the current class, colon CL location manager delegate. So that's the protocol that we're adopting. Open and close curlies. And the one function that we're going to allow Apple's location manager to call is you can start typing in did update locations between the curlies. And there's only one option that shows up. So press return. Xcode writes the function stub for us. And this function is called by iOS whenever the location is updated. iOS is going to look for this function. And since we put self in this class, it knows that it can find the function it needs in this class. It's our job to do stuff when the function is called. Now, this function actually returns several locations when it's called. We only want to work with one location, so we're going to get the last location. We'll do that with guard let location equals locations, plural, dot last, else, curly's return. And you can see this locations plural is just an array of CL locations. Those are coordinates that are passed in by iOS when the location changes. Then we'll set our location property to this location with self.location, that's our location property, equals location, the one we just set up with guard let. Then we use the location to create a region around the location with self.region equals, so we're setting the region property that we declared above, MK coordinate region, open parens, and select the option with center, latitude, and longitude meters. We'll pass in location.coordinate as the center, that should be the device's location, and we'll set the latitude and longitude meters to 5,000 meters each. That's a little over three miles with our device location right in the center. Now there's one comment I want to put in here so that you can see this if you ever copy and reuse this code. It's really important. So next to start updating location, I'm going to write in remember to update the info.plist. So now we're going to head to the same location in our Xcode project where we set up our launch screen. And also when we worked with an app that allowed us to access the phone's image library, we needed to ask permission of the user before we could access those images. So we're going to set permissions in that same location. It's just that this time we need to set up two permissions that are related to getting permission to use the device's location. As an app developer, you just can't write code to get the device's location. The user has to explicitly be asked and grant permission before you can get a location. So it's kind of strange, but we actually need to put in two lines for this. And we're going to write the same message on both of the entries, but both are required. So click on the blue project icon at the top of the project navigator. Then with target selected, select the info tab. And you'll hear people often refer to this as the info.plist. There used to be a set separate file with all of these entries with that name. plist means property list, so these are just settings related to your app. So just like when we add a launch screen here, we can actually go to the very last line. And if you hover your cursor over the end of this first column here, in this bottom most cell, you'll see a little circle with a plus. So click that, you get an entry field, and you could scroll to find what we want, or you could type it in. So I'm actually going to type in capital P privacy space dash space location. You see a bunch of options in here. And the first one I want to select is location always and when in use description. So make sure that's selected and it shows up on its own row, then double click in the far right cell, and we're going to enter a message that's going to show up in a dialog box for the user when we ask for permissions. And I'll just write, this app requires access to the device's location. And I'm also going to highlight and select this and copy it because we're going to put the same message in another entry that we need to add here too. So to add that second entry, I'm going to go to the first column of the last row again, find that little circle in the far right of the first cell, click that, and uh, I'm going to find privacy dash location when in use description. And I know it's weird because we already created one that says always and when in use description. Apparently, there's some legacy change in Apple that requires you to use both of these entries. Again, make sure that you've got two different entries. So there's always and when in use in one and just when in use in the other. And then I'll paste the same phrase in the far right cell here that I entered above.
And that's it. So if you ever work with device location and your location doesn't seem to be working in the simulator, it might be because you didn't set up the info P list entries properly and the console will always show you errors if you run into that problem. So now let's take advantage of this location manager in our app. So first we need to set up an environment object for our location manager. And we'll do that in the app file. So in the project navigator, click on the place lookup demo app. That's a first file in our app. And under the struct definition, we'll declare an instance of the class that we just created with at state object. Remember, we always do that with the first instance of an observable object. This is also going to be an environment object, and we'll follow that with var location manager lower camel case equals location manager upper camel case open and close parens. So now we created an object of our class location manager. Cool. Now also remember that we need to pass this object into the view hierarchy if we're going to use it as an environment object, and this will let the rest of the app have access to it. So beneath the call to content view in the window group clause, we'll just add dot environment object passing in location manager lower camel case, just as we created it above with state object. And now let's see the results of getting the device's location. And why don't we do that in the content view? So why don't we head over to that file and under the struct definition, we'll refer to the environment object with at environment object var lower camel case location manager colon upper camel case location manager no parens afterward because it's an environment object now also remember that when we add an environment object we should also update our preview provider if we don't we might get some weird errors that are not very friendly so just below the content view call in the preview provider we'll say dot environment object and in this case we pass in capital location manager open and close parens so this just says in the live preview when we launch the screen we now have a brand new location manager object to work with but this is important. I'm going to put a comment in here. The location actually won't show in the live preview. We still need the code in the live preview. Otherwise, our live preview will crash. But if we want to actually get the simulated location, we need to run in the simulator. And if you want an actual location, you can run on a device. So now let's print out the coordinates of our current location. Once we get that from the location manager, I don't need the image up here. So I'm going to highlight and delete that. And in the text view, why don't we enter location colon backslash n so that we start on a new line then string interp comma string interp and in the first string interp we'll get the latitude with location manager dot location that's one of its properties dot coordinate for the geographic coordinate dot latitude for latitude and notice that xcode puts a question mark after location just in case we didn't get the location and we returned nil but if this happens we're going to use nil coalescing to make sure that we got a value in here and not nil so i'll just say question mark question mark 0, 0.0 inside of the string interp parentheses then i'm going to copy all of this code inside of the string interp i'm going to paste it in the other string interp but i'm going to change latitude to longitude and then just so things align left, I'll add parens after the V stack above and I'll add alignment colon setting this to dot leading. And again, we're not going to see a simulated location in live preview, although eventually we're going to add a selected value in another text view below this. So for now, I'll just put in a dot padding of dot bottom below the text view that I just created. But I'm going to select my scheme and then I'm going to build and run with the play button. Hammer time. No errors. And whoa, will you look at this? You are asked for permission to use the location. The phrase you entered in the info.p list is shown here. This app requires access to the device's location. So this is where that phrase shows up. I'm going to click allow while using app. And as long as the app is installed on this version of the simulator and it's run on this version of the simulator, I have granted permission for the location to be used. Now I can always go into the device settings and turn that off if I wanted to. But this is looking good. And I see a latitude and longitude here of roughly 42 by negative 71. Now, you probably have values that are different from this. In fact, if you look at the numbers that you're seeing, you probably have a location in San Francisco. That should be the default that Apple shows in Xcode. They used to use their old headquarter, One Infinite Loop, then their new headquarter, Apple Park. Now I think it's some location in downtown San Francisco. But you might want to change this, and you can, in the simulator. So just go in the simulator under the Features menu, select Location, and in here you can select all sorts of things to simulate. You can simulate a run, a bike ride, a car ride, so that will change the location periodically so you can see this in the simulator. That's really useful if you're working on an app and you want to get the location while you're in motion so you don't have to run with your laptop or ride around in a bike or a car to see the results. 
And if you select current location, you enter the longitude and latitude in this box. This will simulate it. That's the location that will be reported by the simulator. Now, of course, if you build and run installing this on an actual device, then if you approve the location on that device, you're going to get that device's location. And feel free to try that out on your own. And just to show you really quickly, since you might not know the latitude and longitude of locations that you want, if you're wondering where you can get those, you can just go to Google Maps, search for a place, right click on a location, you'll see latitude and longitude show up in this menu here. Just click that location, it copies it to the clipboard, then you can separate out each piece and then go back into the simulator under features, location, custom location, and you can paste in the particular latitude and then longitude in the appropriate field. Then the next time you run, you should see that custom location as location reported on your device. So again, it doesn't use your max location, it uses whatever location is entered into the simulator. So Swifters, that's it for setting up the location manager. You can reuse this code if you ever need to get the device's location. And now that we have this in the next lesson, we're gonna create the ability to actually search through places in a search bar and report back the selected place's name, address, and its coordinates. Until then, continue to hack.